to me on on the 18th of March 2011 regarding events that were coming to befall Israel. In all this time that the Lord has been sending me to talk to many nations, my fear was that one day he would lead me to talk to Israel. I always feared that the Lord could one day send me to speak to Israel. However, in the second conversation, this same cloud, the cloud of God's glory, has spoken at me and he stood before me and he told me that I will be leaving to Israel and he told me that I will be going to Israel and then I asked him so when will I go to Israel and he answered very soon. Now, what does that mean to the church? I think the message is absolutely very clear because I've been speaking to many nations, the Lord sent me to speak to many nations, but now that he narrows me to Israel, which means his agenda is now shifting to Israel. And that tells me that the rapture of the church can happen at any time. The Lord is now beginning to pay specific attention to Israel, meaning the revival of Israel. Precious people, we know that after the rapture, the Lord's agenda will be the restoration of Israel, the revival of Israel. Yes. So if this is anything to go by, then you can clearly see that he's slowly shifting into the events in Israel. People, this is the time to hearken unto the word of the Lord and prepare for the coming message. of God, the message of deliverance to the church, but I am announcing to you that Jehovah God, he has changed gears, he has moved to another level, and now he's talking about Jerusalem, that is the church, is to move to another level.
I was preaching somewhere. I was giving the oracles of the Lord, the message of Jehovah. It was a very mighty meeting. Uh, and then when I finished the meeting of the Lord, giving that very mighty message of Jehovah, then someone appeared on my right hand side and he that appeared on my right hand side right away began to speak with me and he told me to walk with him towards a certain place and as we walked he was walking on my right hand side There was a garden, and I knew that I had been working on that garden for all my life. So we walked through the garden, and I heard him talking about that garden, the great work that has happened in that garden. And then through the garden, we reached a place. That when we reached that place, he said, let us go up. Then an elevator appeared, an elevator, a lift appeared, and the elevator opened the door. When the doors of the elevator opened, then I wanted to go in. Because I saw people going into the elevator and going. When I wanted to enter too, he held me back. And he said, your time is not yet. And then he began to walk me back. He walked me back to the garden, through the garden. And he began to show me the green trees. That garden had been desolate. But I had been walking there, I knew that I was walking there, so I knew the, the, the trees, each of the trees. And he began to show me, saying, look at how wonderful your work has been here. And then I reached a place that I knew was dry, there were no plants on that ground within the garden. But now, because I knew I was walking there, I had been digging there, I saw that it was very green and everything was very green. But people had entered the elevator and gone up. Then I remained there walking with him through the garden. I remember each tree I had worked very hard. They became beautiful, wonderful green trees, very green, with a lot of fruits blossoming. And the ground was green. And now I was looking at the work I had been doing by the feet of those trees. As he walked back, then he mentioned this by voice. Then he said that you preached a very good sermon. And as we arrived at the place where the elevator was, the elevator that later opened and people entered and went up. However, I asked him whether I can use the stairs to go up. Then I remember he told me that it's very far away. I cannot reach on foot. Meaning it's a place where people cannot go on foot. After then, the elevator opened and people entered. When I woke up, I trembled because I knew what the Lord had said. May those who have ears listen to the Lord. Shalom. This is what the Lord has said on this day.
then now you see he has come down again to walk with the church that she may do what enter eternity hallelujah the glory comes to walk with men i don't have much time anymore but i need to talk also about something else here he comes to open heaven is that all right he comes to open heaven over the church over the elect to open heaven hallelujah if we go to the book of deuteronomy and i think it's deuteronomy chapter 11 or chapter 9 let me check first deuteronomy uh, that is going to be chapter 11 i'm right from verse 8 i'll read deuteronomy chapter 11 has somebody got in there he says observe these observe therefore all the commands i am giving you today so that you may have the strength to go in and take over the land that you are crossing the jordan to possess and so that you may live long in the land that the lord swore to your forefathers to give to them and their descendants a land flowing with milk and honey hallelujah verse 10 the land you are entering to take over is not like the land of egypt from which you have come verse 10 is so key verse 10 is key everybody continue again verse 10 the land you are you are entering to take over is not like the land of egypt from which you have come where you planted your seed and irrigated it by foot as in a vegetable garden but the land you are crossing the jordan to take possession of is a land of mountains and valleys that drink rain directly from heaven <laughs> then he says he goes on to say it is a land that the lord your god cares for the eyes of the lord your god are continually on it from the beginning of the year to its end so if you faithfully obey the command I'm giving you today to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I'll send rain on your land. Are you seeing open heaven? I'll send rain in your land in a season, both autumn and spring rain, so that you may gather in the grain, new wine and oil. I'll provide grass in the field for your cattle and you'll eat and be satisfied. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. This is the message. Everybody focus now. The same cloud, same, came down. And when the same God came down, he called Moses from within the cloud. He asked Moses to go. And when Moses went in, this is what the cloud said. Why? Listen very carefully. When the Lord found that they were already inclined to Egypt, he said, no, 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 no. There is a misunderstanding here. And the Lord came and the cloud came down and called Moses and this is what the cloud said go tell these people that that careless living they had in Egypt cannot work anymore he said that careless worship they used to have in Egypt will not work anymore and he said because in Egypt you lived as you wanted. He said, Tell them that however the land they are crossing the Jordan to take possession of, the land they are crossing the Jordan to take possession of is a land that has mountains and valleys mountains and valleys and he says those mountains and valleys because they have not river nile they depend and drink rain 
directly from Jehovah in heaven. Directly. Because they have no river Nile to depend on. For them, they just depend directly from heaven on Jehovah. Meaning, therefore, the heavens must be kept open in that land for you to survive. Are you understanding why he's taking the church today? I think somebody's walking with me understanding this. Are you understanding where he's taking the church? He's saying, you are, you are crossing over to take possession of. But he's saying, hey, that this cloud has come to lead the church to a certain land. In that land, he says, and if you will obey the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and all your soul, then he will bring you rain in your land in its seasons. Meaning, your rains will not be late. Are you hearing? Meaning, he will ensure that the spring, the autumn rains come in time. Spring rains come in time. There you go now. If you will obey the Lord your God and love him with all your heart and all your soul and serve him with all your heart and all your soul, then you will do the following. You will ensure that there is an open heaven over you. And when there is that open heaven, the first rain will come and also the latter rain into your land and he says that when that latter rain appears the harvest will mature and you'll be able to harvest the grain and take it to the barns and he says when you take in that harvest of souls there will also be a flow of new oil and wine He will keep the heavens open. But the other side of it says what? However, if you don't obey the Lord your God, to love him and serve him with all your heart and soul, he will shut the heavens over the land. Did you understand? So let me summarize for you here. What is the Lord saying? He's saying that he has come to give leadership, the leading of God, leadership to the church. And he's taking the church to a land of revival. Because the title we are operating under is called the cloud of God comes to open heaven into the church. So he will ensure there will be open heaven in the church. Are you understanding? For you to survive to the land of revival where I'm taking you, there must be open heavens above you. Because the mountains and valleys, because every life in that land of revival drinks directly from God. So the heavens must be kept open. That is the kind of worship you have in Botswana. Then he say, where the glory is taking the church, forget it. Forget it. You cannot worship like that. That satanic worship cannot survive there. He says, that devil worship cannot survive there. That land is flowing with milk and honey. But the heavens must remain open. So if there's anything that is going to defile that there, cut it right here. Today. Oh yes. Here, God will have to be God. Oh yes. When the same cloud came down 
on Mount Sinai, he came to establish God's testimony. To establish the statutes of God, the laws of God. He brought the laws of God. And he comes also now to establish the statute of the new law of the grace. And you and I know that the new law of the grace combines both the old law and today's present law. Right? That's why the Old Testament is in your hands. Hallelujah. And he say that when he came to establish the statutes of God, he said things like this. Shabbat, in Hebrew they call it Shabbat. Shabbat shall be holy. You shall gather all the manna that you need for those two days. And the next day you shall not gather. That day is put aside, shall be holy unto me. When he began to talk about establishing the statute. And he also ensured that it's implemented. Because he's telling me that there are some people that the Lord created who were even born again. But because of this thing called holiness, the lack of it, they will not enter. Amazing. And then, so you really want to press on for the first prize. You want to press on and ensure you enter.